that would be like me being on Joe Rogan. So exciting news, the Joe Rogan experience is back on YouTube. Joe Rogan's new deal with Spotify does not include an exclusivity clause, so he is free to upload all of his episodes to other platforms. And Joe marked his return with something of a bang as he came back to YouTube with his first full interview in over three and a half years to be uploaded to the platform with fellow comedian Cat Williams. Which, as you can see and as predicted, was a very successful episode with nearly 9 million views in the first three days. Now, obviously, this was a highly anticipated episode after all of Cat Williams' antics recently on Shannon Sharp's podcast, which went massively viral. After Cat essentially spent the best part of three hours throwing multiple people in the entertainment business, under the bus. Joe don't want me on there. I need to be on Shannon. Joe, Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously after hearing Kat say that, we were all desperate to see him sit down with Joe Rogan and tell him to his face that all of his friends aren't funny. Right? That's what we all wanted to see, didn't we? But uh, unfortunately, things didn't go quite as expected. <laughs> but that's really how it is. So let's get into it. Let's take a look at Cat Williams on the Joe Rogan experience. Oh, Daniel Ballin, this is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? What's up? How are you? <laughs> I can't believe we never met each other until today. That's kind of crazy. It's really weird. It's kind of crazy. I was always like at the store, they're like, Cat was here last night. I'm like, fuck. It was always two ships in the night. Right. No, I don't know. This could be me reading too much into this, but uh, I felt like a lot of the interview, Cat Williams was kind of uh, biting his tongue. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, it's not like he can just go on there and then out of nowhere start saying how much of an absolute dickhead Andrew Schultz is. I was, however, hoping for a little bit more than what he gave us in this interview, though, and uh, he didn't really show any of that boisterous fighty drunk sort of guy that was on the Shay Shay podcast. He just came across as a little nervous, perhaps a little paranoid from all the weed Joe Rogan's been giving him. But the interaction between the two of them certainly did uh, produce a few moments of uh, comedy gold. I would, I would see you and not be able to get to you. Like, comedy is small, but only if you're mediocre. <laughs> It's big, it's a vast, vast place. Now, I've been trying to work out exactly what Kat meant by that, because Joe Rogan has just described their relationship, the fact that they never coincided in the same place. They always missed each other. He described them as two ships in the night. <laughs> and uh, Kat just says, well, I saw you and I knew I'd be able to get to you or something like that. And that comedy is small only if you're mediocre. It's a vast, vast place. Almost like he's saying... He had better things to do. Again, I could be completely wrong, but that response was quite strange, and I took it to mean that, that he had absolutely no interest in hanging around in the Rogan sphere, and that's why they never really interacted. But whatever he meant, Joe Rogan's response is absolutely bloody amazing. It's vast, and it's also small, because yeah. there's so few of us. Oh boy, here we go a fucking again. If you are as familiar as I am with Joe Rogan's musings on the world, then you'll know that this is one of his favorite hot takes. That comedians are a rare commodity. They're almost like a different species. There's so few of us. Yeah, you're like fucking snow leopards. And worldwide, we were talking about this the other day. There's maybe 500 of us on the planet. Now, look at the expression on Cat Williams' face. And you try to convince me that he is not thinking to himself now. He's not ticking off on his mental bingo card one of the topics he had down that he knew Joe Rogan was going to mention in the interview. He's thinking, well, goddamn. <laughs> it's taken Joe Rogan five sentences to mention what a critically endangered species comedians are. God damn. You know, you got to be real generous and say 500 because it's really probably about 250. Right. But like legit comics, guys you want to hang out with, guys who are fun, yeah, guys who your you numbers recommend. Going down. Your numbers going down. Your numbers going down. <laughs> <laughs> guys you'd recommend leave your house, get a babysitter. 
The number's going down. I think exactly this moment, Joe Rogan, for the first time in years, realized what one of his guests was thinking. And I'm pretty sure we all know Cat Williams was thinking, I ain't calling no goddamn babysitter to go and see Joe Rogan. It's not a lot of people. Anyway, this next part of the interview was, it's just going to blow your mind if you're a regular Joe Rogan viewer. Because I can't believe how many hours, I was thinking this to myself, how many hours of my life How many millions of people have lost millions of hours of their lives listening to Joe Rogan talk about elk and mountain lions and chimpanzees? We get it. They're strong. They're aggressive. I know. They've given him three stomachs to be able to, and you would have to have known that he was going to then emit a gas that was going to be necessary on the planet. Like, Mm, yeah. Like, none of these things. Fertilizer, are, all of are, it. Right. The Seeds. fact that everything goes together is mm-hmm. how you know. Okay, so as you can probably tell, the weed is really starting to take control of Cat Williams' mind here. The super strength weed that Joe Rogan forces on all of his guests. But even in this very sort of paranoid, oh, everything's connected, man, uh, kind of uh, uh, ramblings from Cat here, there is a a thread of coherent conversation that uh, a normal person would be able to latch onto. <sighs> Not Joe Rogan, though. Cat has made the fatal error of mentioning an animal. You never mention animals on the Joe Rogan experience. There is no turning back. It's pretty wild. And yeah. every time we step in and fuck with it, it goes haywire. Uh-oh, Joey's thinking about Mother Nature. Right. Every time human beings do it. Predictably haywire. Haywire. <laughs> Right. Haywire. Uh-oh, he's looking away. He doesn't know what Cat's saying anymore. He's gone into himself. He's thinking about haywire, haywire. He's thinking about hay. What eats hay? Horses eat hay. Right, but that's part of that's part of the benefits of free will. Mm-hmm. Is you really can jump into a volcano, dude. Yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> poor naive Cat Williams. He still thinks he can have the wider rambling paranoid discussion about jumping into volcanoes and free will and how everything's connected and stuff. But uh, Joe is gone. He is not there anymore. He's thinking how he can weave into the conversation uh, something about an animal he's thinking about. <laughs> hey, why? <laughs> you really can. I mean, think about what we've done to wildlife. Fuck. The, wild, the, the craziest thing in this country, especially right here, is pigs. Bro, wild pigs are everywhere, and there's so many of them. <laughs> Cat's face here is absolutely amazing. He can't believe that Joe Rogan is doing all of the classic Joe Rogan topics. They're only 10 minutes into their conversation, and Joe Rogan has already brought up wild boars and how comedians are being hunted to extinction. You know, stand-up comedian poaching might actually be a pretty lucrative trade. I... For instance, I would pay top dollar for an ashtray made out of Matt Rife's veneers. I went to a friend of mine's farm, or well, it's like a ranch, to, to hunt wild pigs. Yeah. And uh, you just hear them like, like Lord of the Rings characters in the so bushes. <laughs> and there's 150 of them near you, 250 of them, thousands on the ranch. They're all over the place, and they have three litters a year. And they start having litters when they're six months old. That's very nice, Joe. You clearly know a lot about pigs. But now it's the other children's turn to show and tell. I've got to say, I kind of low-key... I hate saying low-key, but it is is what it is. I low-key find it very adorable uh, when Joe Rogan goes off on his stupid animal tangents. (laughs) Well done, Joe. That sounded just like a pig. (laughs) <laughs> oh, God, what's he going to do next? Hump the stool. They just pump out piglets. Let's go. You can tell they're not delicious. They are delicious. Oh, well, then here we go, then. They, we, don't really ha- we don't really have a problem, then, right. do we? No, we have a we-need-to-eat-pigs problem. <laughs> no, we, we need to be sending this off somewhere yeah. to someone who does. Uh, another valiant attempt by poor Cat Williams to send us back down his paranoid drug-induced <laughs> rabbit hole to hell about supply chains and stuff like that. But uh, no, no, Joe Rogan has tasted blood. He's talking about pigs for the next five minutes. Well, definitely we should. That would be an easy way to solve a lot of hunger problems. I'm saying we live in a country yeah. where we're complaining about food sources. It's a good point. These chickens are pecking us to death. They're <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I can't even sleep. <laughs> yeah, but they're delicious, yeah. right? Yeah. 
you have more chickens. <laughs> I've got to say, I, I laughed uh, quite hard at that uh, Cat Williams bit about the chickens. <laughs> They're pecking me to death. I can't even sleep. <laughs> but uh, what really did it for me was uh, Joe Rogan ending that little segment by saying, yeah, let's have more chickens. Yeah, have more chickens. <laughs> what a retard. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I don't hate Joe Rogan at all, but uh, I do find it amazing that the most successful guy at having conversations in the history of the world is really bad at having conversations. I mean, I'll bet you thought he'd finished with the pigs now, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we do have an overabundance problem, for sure. We really do. But the pig thing is a wild one. It's, it's hard to get them. Like, you gotta, you get, they're very smart, and they spread out, and there's so fucking many of them, they shoot them with helicopters. They oh, fly yeah, over them. Just, whoo, right. right. I haven't it's... been invited three times since I moved here to go shoot pigs out of a helicopter. I swear to God, I cannot believe, what would you do if you get on Joe Rogan, this is your big chance, right? For everyone to see you in the world, and you can make millions of, the, <laughs> of this one interview. All you have to do is sit down and talk to Joe Rogan for a couple of hours, and that could change your life forever. And this guy just tells you how he's been invited to shoot pigs from a helicopter on three separate occasions. No follow-up question, no nothing. You just have to run with that. And what amazed me is how well Cat Williams handled it. Well, that's part of the reason that you came to Texas. The freedom, for Texas, sure. Texas is a place of great adventure. Yeah. And people who believe in that. Yeah. Right? It's really God's country in the right places. It is in the right places. I so you can see at this point, Cat Williams hasn't completely given up hope on this interview, and he's doing a good job of doing well what Joe Rogan should be doing, you know, taking a very specific point that Joe makes about shooting pigs from helicopters and uh, trying to expand it into a broader point that can allow the discussion to flow more uh, easily, I guess. He's talking about how uh, there's a lot of freedom and a spirit of adventure in Texas, so maybe that could lead to... Uh, a another topic but as the interview goes on joe continues with his bizarre tangents and uh cat well cat just gradually gets more and more stoned so and this is when you know the interview a joe rogan interview has really hit the wall it's uh, when he's asking jamie to pull stuff up on the screen and he's showing videos and stuff to his guests like a total boomer are you fucking kidding me the reshot structure that's it the reshot structure I mean, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, so Kat is barely responding at this point because it's just like, what am I supposed to do? I'm looking at a screen of something in a desert. I don't know what you want from me. But uh, he's a lot cooler than I would be. I would be absolutely shitting myself if I was on Joe Rogan and he was asking Jamie to pull up pictures of the reshart structure. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do now? I think if you go 3D, you can see the... Now imagine if that was this massive city of concentric circles and walls and a thriving population, and then it gets hit with this water. You can see the water erosion all over the place. The whole thing looks like it's washed out. See? Yeah. It looks like it was washed out because it was. Right. And that's salt, I believe. But that's yes, what there's makes... salt there. That's the other thing. Between this and the Garden of Eden locations like these are the two these are two of the great landmarks in uh, human history where's the garden of eden well now a lot of people have been focusing on this being sort of uh, weed talk and uh, he's talking like a stoner and whatever but i mean that's clearly part of it but another massive part of it is just like you get to a point what can you say to Joe Rogan when he's showing you pictures of the reshot structure on the on the computer? What does he want from me? Of course, he's trying again uh, with his weedy mind now to say something about the, the Garden of Eden to sort of make a more expansive point. But uh, there's just no salvaging this. It's impossible to hold a conversation with Joe Rogan. Life would change forever if you had undeniable contact with something. He's talking about aliens again. If, it would just change forever. Your perception of light, you, you, just to drive through the in and out drive through would be different. Everything would be different. 
Right, but you taking can, a shit would be different. There's aliens out there. They're, you could say that about smelling salts or <laughs> or mushrooms. Or you could say that about. I mean, it, a lot of people think that this is the drugs talking. I am not sure that after two hours, even if I'd taken nothing at all, maybe the only thing I could think about would be drugs. Like that would be the one thing I'd be certain of in the world that drugs exist. That's that's it. What can you say? He's saying, wouldn't it be amazing if there were aliens and we knew there were aliens? What the hell do I say to that? Exactly. After two hours of listening to shit like that, you'd probably be like cat as well. You'd just say something like, yeah, smelling salts, uh, mushrooms. Like, what do you say? Lots of things. Yeah, um, but about that specifically, that if that if we knew that that was real, because I think it's probably true. But I still hold open the pat, the the possibility that it's all bullshit. Here's the whole thing. No one who has ever seen more space or the universe than you and I has ever seen anything that was bullshit. Mm, okay, to be fair, that might be. I am willing to concede that that sentence of Cat Williams there might not just be the lightheadedness that accompanies uh, listening to two hours of Joe Rogan's pig shooting stories. It's possible he's smashed. What do you mean? In the universe. Uh, what I mean is like fake UFO footage. There's a lot of fake footage. I would want to see, if you could see something yourself, and I have good friends that have. <laughs> yeah, that patronizing sigh and side glance, that's, uh, that's the work of a stoner. But what I mean is like fake UFO footage. There's a lot of fake footage. I would want to see, if you could see something yourself, and I have good friends that have. I have good friends that have had experiences that they say there is no fucking way that that is us, that this is something else. <clears throat> right, just understand that part of the job in any of these circumstances is to kick up kerfuffle. Like, right. that's part of it. Like, if you live in Florida, you see how many times things go off into space, and you know that there's a pattern between that and government airplanes and like, mm -hmm. like our stories of cooperation have been nothing but cooperative as they could only be like we don't and it goes on like this and it goes on like this yes it does uh anyway if you've enjoyed the video uh give it a like uh, tell me what you thought in the comments and subscribe to the channel of course and turn on the notification bells and uh, if you want to help out the channel check out my patreon the links in the description i've got a few videos up there i absolutely promise this week we're putting some new videos on the patreon page as well i'll see you in the next one thanks bye